I have one other speaker here. Uh, he is uh, Mas Aji, uh, a, a founder of Mavindo or Masyarakat Anti Fitnah Indonesia, who who act to be a hoax busting in Indonesia. Before we move on to the discussion, I want to Mas Aji to introduce uh, yourself and what have done with the Mavindo since 2016. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mbak Nenden. Uh, so, yeah, you can call me Aji or some other people call me Zach. Both are fine for me. Uh, I, uh, uh, I found Mavindo at 2016 with uh, some other uh, people. So it's basically uh, an independent uh, non-profit and also volunteer-based volunteer uh, organizations that aims to uh, tackle the hoax. Yeah, Indonesia is famously, we call it hoax. Uh, we are now uh, have uh, more than 500 volunteers around the nation. Uh, some of them are uh, professionals. Uh, uh, we have some journalists, but many housewives and also oh. students. Yeah, just everybody that would like to uh, have some kind of uh, responsibility, sense of belonging that this uh, situation could make uh, worsen, hmm. could make uh, like a discord between families. So uh, they uh, gather together and now uh, our community, we prefer to call us a community, uh, now uh, having like uh, uh, four main uh, programs. The first one is the, the fact checking. Mm -hmm. We are one of the six uh, organizations that uh, as uh, international fact checker network as signatories. Um, we also found uh, checkfacta.com initiative. It is a uh, like uh, inspired by cross check initiative in France uh, when uh, they have the uh, presidential elections 2017. Uh, we make it here in Indonesia. Now we have. Uh, 24 online medias working with us, uh, but it's on not only for uh, ele election issues, but also other issues like health issues, like disaster issues as well. And uh, other than fact checking, we also deal uh, on the literacy, uh, digital literacy issues. Hmm. We work together with uh, Mastroni in cyber creasy with other more than 100 organizations to work together on the digital literacy, but our focus is mostly how to tackle, to handle the negative contents, uh, misinformation contents on the social media. Mm -hmm. uh, and also we have uh, some kind of approach to do public campaign and also we see the solutions for dealing these uh, uh, misinformation problems should not be only uh, using the fact checking alone. So we also do uh, like uh, we call it uh, convening, mm -hmm. how to build the trust between the people so that uh, the ecosystem for the disinformation can be reduced. So maybe that's uh, for my introduction. All right, okay, thank you so much. We'll talk about it later. Okay, uh, I think I will ref uh, revisit what Mas Doni present about the collaboration between the multi-stakeholders. I think, I don't know, I'm quite skeptical about it. I mean, like, <laughs> you know, like, if you have something uh, with government, the, the first thing come up uh, in my mind is about, like, the, the hard border crisis, and then there's a sectoral ego and something and so on. Uh, and how much the new will see it? What, what makes you optimistically this, this approach, this idea will, will be implemented in the in the next government maybe in the next our new minister and what 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 happened why this idea or this approach is cannot be implemented in the previous uh, government yeah thank you manen so uh, first of all we have to understand that uh, civil servant they work they they works uh, this is bir bir bureaucracy, right? Yeah. They work like, uh, they have to obey a uh, very strict uh, SOP, Standard Operating Procedure. So, <laughs> a very different culture between the civil servants, the government, and the civil society. Yes. 
okay? For civil society, for example, we can do more creative way to solve the problem because we are not so, what do you call it? Terikat, uh, not so, um, uh, what do you call it? Yeah. Bound, attached. No, attached. attached or bound, yeah, I mean, to the administrative things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? We, we, we don't have, uh, we don't have to be afraid with the KPK. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, er 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 commissions, er commissions. Uh, cor corruptions. Because we, we are not using the, the money from the people, right? Mm. But for civil servants, for the governments, they're very afraid if there is a, some finding related to the, uh, for example, administrative mm. team or the financial mm. report. Mm. So they have to very extra careful their, a lot of their time, con the time consuming, they, uh, you know, if every working hours, they mm. have to focus on how not to, how to avoid, avoid <laughs> the regulation. Yeah. Can you imagine how can this situation can create greater uh, uh, ecosystem for uh, having more creative mm -hmm. things? Mm -hmm. So that's why in cybercracy, for example, there's a digital literacy uh, uh, national movement. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the multi stakeholders developed together for the digital literacy. Mm -hmm. There's a government from MCIT, uh, one of the governments from MCIT, the other, the other uh, government as well, uh, ministries, but they're helping for the administrative things. Mm -hmm. But for doing some outreach and engagement, it must be driven by civil society, like Mafindo, for example. So it doesn't, I mean, if you ask me whether I'm a, should we optimist or not? No, we should pragmatist. Okay. But optimist is should be embedded okay. uh, to the, our um, uh, strategy. So again, it's quite a challenge when the civil society working together with the government mm -hmm. and the civil society. I, I know I'm from civil society, but they have very limited uh, passion. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, because they want, we, we want to make some changes immediately, right? Immediately, yeah. Cannot, mm -mm. because we're facing the bureaucracy the machine. Yes, yeah, right. Uh, somehow it will not, if we are not so patient enough, then we'll get frustrated. Ah, I don't want to work with the government. <laughs> In the other side from the government, come on, I have to work to be civil society. They, you know, they need to go fast, but we cannot keep mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. at that, you know, at, at that pace. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we need some strategy. We need some time to adjust mm. the move and the and and the and the and the way we do running the program should be adjust between you know complying with the regulation, which mm -hmm. is very strict in the government side, but also having the creative way mm -hmm. from the civil society. Uh, uh, movement. But is it possible to implement it to this Do era? I have a choice to say no? <laughs> I <don't> no. Know. <laughs> yes, well, it will be different. Okay, I, I will be tell the truth. It will be different if the leaders is come from the professional or come from the political party. Okay. That's the only clue. I don't want to elaborate more. <laughs> but yes, I mean, it's possible but it depends how our civil society, what we call it, uh, endurance. Oh, okay. If we have endurance, if you have patience, then go help the government from inside. But still, we need a civil society from outside I see. to criticize, to do balancing, something mm -hmm. like that. But something, some, someone should be uh, yeah. inside. Do something from the inside yeah. government. All right, thank you so much. Then I want to hear about what happened about uh, the collaboration. Is there any collaboration between the government and then the civil society in I don't know in Singapore? I don't know. I have, I have. Uh, after I hear your presentation about it, I don't think so that you guys have like kind of a collaboration or there is something happen, or there is something 
that could happen in the future about that collaboration between the uh, governance and the civil society? There is collaboration on different issues, I think. So mm. for like, for example, on, um, you know, uh, housing for single mothers, things like that, the government is pretty happy to collaborate with civil society or some civil society groups. So there is a bit of division going on between what are the good civil society groups that the government will talk to and who are the bad civil society groups that the government will not talk to. Uh, I think ultimately also when talking about multi-stakeholder approach, um, what's really important is, is trust. So mm -hmm. it's, not, it, it's not consensus, but it's trust. So even if we disagree, um, we can trust that this is a good faith conversation. And mm -hmm. I think right now in Singapore, one of the issues between civil society and government is a real lack of trust. So even uh, last year, um, when the government had a select committee to talk about, before they even brought in this law, they wanted to talk about what to do. Um, and, you know, I participated and I was talking to other people in civil society and there was a sense of, why should we do it? It's a mm. trap. Okay. Um, they don't really want to consult. They don't really, they are not really interested mm -hmm. in listening. Why should we um, do it just so that they can pretend, mm -hmm. you know? So you don't want to, so like there were activists who were like, I don't want to participate because I don't want to legitimize a process that I feel is, uh, you know, unjust and not in good faith. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, I think, a, a valid sort of worry that people mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. in, in civil society. Um, in the end, we decided to participate anyway because we were like, if they give us space, we need to be in the space. If you don't take the space, then mm -hmm. they'll just say, well, you weren't interested. Next time, we don't need to have this mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. And so we, we did participate. Um, it didn't go particularly well for me. Uh, I think I in the end, I was kind of like, yeah, it's a trap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but but that's, that's, the, that's the key, you know, it's, it's trust. It's really, really important that the government does not see civil society as the enemy trying to take them down. Mm. And civil society does not see government as the oppressor. And because that's the situation in Singapore at the moment, it's really hard to engage mm -hmm. properly okay. on issues. I see, I see, okay. So what about in Germany, Marcus? Is there, what's the, the biggest challenge to implement, implement the, the idea of the collaboration between the government and the civil society regarding to this ISO but the fake news and or not fake news uh, the disinformation and misinformation <laughs> and it's on yeah we 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 were um, like writing statements uh, to, to the law and um, we have we have a, like for, for for digital rights we have a huge movement there's the chaos computer club which is a hacker organization but mm -hmm. they have i don't know 10,000 members and really strong and so and they exist since since um, f uh, 35 years or 40 years okay. so the culture of, 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 of computer and IT people is is largely influenced um, so so we yeah we, we we are always doing statements we also did had big protests against this uh, EU in the European Union they mm -hmm. want to implement uh, upload filters on oh. uh, for for all uh, platforms uh, it's for copyrights but okay. there, there were demonstrations with 200,000 people in germany which was like the biggest internet protest this year uh, because people saying hey okay it's not only copyright you can easily make a copyright filter mm. to some filter which is uh, putting other information down or not mm -hmm. uh, yeah Okay, I see. And then Mas Aji Mafindo, as one of the stakeholders that could be together with this collaboration, what do you think, or what your uh, perspective about this collaboration, and what do you think, uh, how to make it uh, can be implemented as soon as possible? Uh, well, uh, on terms of collaboration, I think uh, there is a kind of a bright side of this and there is also uh, some challenge of this. Yeah, for example, in Indonesia, the, the fact-checking ecosystem is growing very fast. Mm -hmm. For example, if compared to 2017, uh, nowadays, most of the major uh, news media outlet, they have their own fact-checking uh, columns. And also, 
uh, uh, I already told you about the Czech Fakta Initiative. Yes. It is also very active. They fact check like the when the we, we have the presidential elections, the they do the live debate and then we do the live fact checking. Mm -hmm. It also influences people to, to educate them about the situation, political mm -hmm. situations. Mm -hmm. But also we also have a good collaborations like with the general commission elections and also the uh, Bawaslu. Bawaslu is a elect electoral supervisory board uh, to make sure because in Indonesia uh, the issues of the hoax is not only about this candidate attacking the other candidates, but it also attack the legitimacy of the process of the election itself. Mm. So we have to protect it. So uh, we have we have a very good collaborations with them, and yeah, it have a, a lot of uh, good stories on it. And uh, we also have just signed a, a partnership with the BIPOM. BIPOM is like a FDA in the United States, the mm. body that deal with the uh, drug and uh, food issues, mm -hmm. it's because it's very important. I mean that uh, hoax in this uh, area may be underlooked because of uh, the political issues that may be sexy yes. for medias, yeah. But it's actually also very dangerous. But uh, they open themselves to uh, work together, to collaborate, so we need to, uh, uh, this, thing, this thing is, uh, uh, sorry, to extinguish the, mm -hmm. the hoax in uh, health and also uh, food drugs issues. Uh, I have also one uh, one uh, one good experience. Uh, at the time last year, we had a governor election in West Kalimantan. So West Kalimantan is a provincial. Uh, with uh, people said that it would be like a potential uh, horizontal conflict because of the governor elections. So at that time, we set up uh, we called Hoax Crisis Center. So basically, it's uh, like a networking mm -hmm. uh, between uh, civil society, between journalists, mm -hmm. within religious leaders, within political leaders, mm -hmm. within the government, within the, pol uh, the police. Uh, so it is like uh, set setting the environment so that if there is a kind of uh, information that wrong that could lead to uh, conflict, that we could we could uh, uh, battle it together. And it works. I mean that you can read the report from uh, IPEC, the Sydney Jones, mm -hmm. uh, uh, August 2018, that the relatively, uh, they said that the relatively calm situation after the elections in the governor elections in West Kalimantan, maybe, maybe, uh, also uh, one of the impact of this kind of the uh, collaboration. So mm -hmm. it worked. So at the moment, we are also trying to uh, use this kind of uh, ecosystem uh, to make it in Papua, but of course Papua is quite different, it's more difficult, but mm -hmm. I think uh, one lesson that we uh, understand that we might need lo localized uh, localized uh, solutions, so locality mm -hmm. solutions. So for example, some things that we make it in Jakarta, in Java, might be like we need a kind of uh, modifications if it, it would like to work in mm -hmm. other uh, place. So this is the thing that uh, we have to learn. Okay, I see. Okay, so actually the collaboration is very, very positive to, to, to create the ecosystem, to push this uh, positivity to the society. And then the other things that I, uh, I think it's very interesting is about like uh, the content itself. In Indonesia, we know that, yes, Mas Dani, maybe know about the content restriction or website restriction. Actually, I don't know, it's, it is uh, the Indonesian authority has already defined which one is the negative content, then you should be restricted or this one or no or what and how. Because if we, if we uh, revisit the, the Kirsten said that in the FOPMA, this is like, the false, uh, I don't know, I forget, the false news is false news. So, a false statement of fact is something that's false or yes, misleading. Yes, I mean like that. Yeah. So, it's not, it's not very clear, of course, right? So, I just want to ask about how, actually, what is the ideal, uh, ideal method to define which one is the positive content and the other is negative content? Maybe from Mas Dani first? No, there is no, okay. So actually the government will stick to the uh, regulations. We have mm -hmm. IT law, right? It's actually define what content it should be uh, forbidden or mm -hmm. should be uh, 
taken down mm -hmm. if there is a publish in the internet. But the challenge is, of course, I, 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 I agree with you, Mbak, that to, to define whether this category yes. is um, is already you know uh, cross the cross the line or not is not so easy to uh, to do. The challenge is because everybody put the MCIT under the spotlight as mm -hmm. the hub, as the central that do the blocker or censorship or filtering, what, yeah, yeah. What, whatever the name it is. So, but the MCIT, yeah, of course, because the, the MCIT, they, they handle the internet access, uh, the content policy, online content policy, but they don't have a competence on that very specific issues, like mm -hmm. food and drug, for example, mm -hmm. like head, head speech and mm -hmm. religious uh, head, head speech, for example. So, uh, if you see the model A, B, C, D yeah. a, that I uh, present recently, actually it try, actually the, the, um, the authority try not to run away from the responsibility, but try to distribute uh. to uh, the, um, the process of um, uh, categorizing, which is this, the good content or the mm -hmm. bad content to the, the other sectors. Mm -hmm. But the challenge is the other sectors, for example, if I can say bluntly, the other ministries, they don't want to take care of the content, the content policy, online content mm -hmm. things because, oh, this is not my responsibility, this is the MCIT one. So how can you imagine the MCIT, they have to handle even like the animals, um, uh, hewan, hewan langka, animals, uh, endangered animals, animals in dangers, posted in online, and someone said, oh, it should be blocked because it's against the law. <laughs> and and then the MCIT say, I don't know about anything about it, animals. Yeah. So that's why, if we put <laughs> multi stakeholders or civil society yeah. in the MCIT only, it will mm -hmm. be it will only make the system. Okay, it can en more engagement from mm -hmm. civil society, but the process will take longer to, to decide whether it should be taken down or not. So mm -hmm. that's why the model that yeah. I, we, I pro we propose today is distributed. Mm -hmm. there's, some, there's a lot of civil society that work on food and drugs. Mm -hmm. Help mm -hmm. the Ministry of Health, help the agency of food and drugs. Mm -hmm. And discuss with them. So when they, uh, when there's some content should be blocked related to the sectors, and the sector send the report to the MCIT, mm -hmm. MCIT will say, okay, this is from Fort and Rex, block or unblock, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. directly, fast. Oh, see. But it's already discussed among the sectors, not discussed okay. in the MCIT because it will be bottlenecking. Mm -hmm. And if this bottlenecking, if there is need a proper and immediate response it, it, and we still ask the governments to do engagement with civil society, well, it will too late. Yeah. So it, there's a well. actual perspective that I, I learned from. from oh, I okay, okay. So what about in Singapore? Do you think there is a, this is an ideal method to define with what, which is yeah, the, the, the negative content or the, the other content? It's not just um, an issue of Singapore. It's mm. coming down to... Oh, okay. It's coming down to who is regulating um, yeah. the issue. So if you say... So for example, Singapore is saying that... Um, <laughs> so, so Singapore is saying that, um, for example, Facebook cannot be trusted. Mm -hmm to deal with the issue. So actually what the Singapore government has done in the run-up to POFMA is point at examples around the world. So for example, they say, look at Myanmar, look at how Facebook failed there, mm -hmm. and look at the harm that has been caused. And therefore, because Facebook cannot be trusted, then we as government will step in. If you cannot do your job and regulate what's on your platform, we will regulate your platform for you. And so 
it became this prop binary of well, then do you trust the government to decide yeah. what is true or false? Or do you trust Facebook to decide what is true or false? And personally, I trust neither one. Um, <laughs> I mean, the, and ultimately, for example, when, when, when the law passed, Facebook, which has a huge uh, presence in Singapore, will comply with the law because, you know, Facebook as a company has no kind of obligation to care about freedom of expression in Singapore, mm -hmm. or to care about the things that Singaporean mm -hmm. civil society mm -hmm. cares about. Their, their business, they want to mm -hmm. make money, and they want to be in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've, we often feel like we are caught between this. Do you want the government to regulate, or do you want the tech companies to regulate? And neither one is very democratic, and at the moment, neither one is very transparent, because we also don't know yeah. how sometimes the community standards are enforced, and it's very confusing that like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, all have different community standards, and sometimes yeah. their own standards of what is hate speech is different from mm -hmm. platform to platform, mm -hmm. and it's very confusing. People don't know how to like, um, appeal if they get blocked. Sometimes people get blocked for like no real reason and then yes, there's no right. way to appeal it and you're like, why did I get blocked? You can't figure it out. Um, and so I was looking at the UN Special Rapporteur for Freedom of Expression wrote a book, mm -hmm. um, David Kay, he wrote a book called Speech Police where he made the argument that actually international human rights law is already existing and there is you know, jurisprudence mm -hmm. of international human rights law that deals with the limits of freedom of expression and how to deal with hate speech because actually what we should be worried about is not that fake news exists or that misinformation exists um, because it's always existed but we should be worried about the harm that it's causing mm -hmm. and so his case he his argument was that there should be clear international human rights standards which we can take from existing uh, international human rights law that all the companies adhere to. So they have the same standard. So people mm. understand the same standard. There should be not just civil society engagement with government, but civil mm. society engagement with the tech companies right. so that we know how they arrive at their decisions and we know how they arrive at their policies because at the moment, nobody knows, right? Like we, we send in feedback from Southeast Asia, then somebody in Silicon Valley comes up with some sort of policy and we don't understand how it works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So there needs to be transparency all, all the way around and there needs to be you know, clear international standards that people can understand, yes. rather than saying, oh, the government does it or Facebook does it. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Actually, I wonder, because there's a lot of like uh, law enforcement in Singapore and like you, so, uh, you show about that how the activist is being uh, captured or uh -huh. jailed. Is there any like alternative way to the activist or to journalists to still like express their concerns about the government by avoid the law itself? I mean, the, it is possible. It's not that anyone who disagrees immediately gets arrested. It is possible. It's just how much kind of risk are you mm -hmm. comfortable with? Mm -hmm. So for example, I mean, it's not always a bad thing that we have to be very, very careful about what we say and how we phrase things. So, I mean, the, the good side of that is that you become very thoughtful and rigorous about how you write because you're like, if I phrase it badly, mm -hmm. maybe I'll get sued for defamation, maybe it's contempt yes. of court. And so on, on the good side, it makes you more cautious, but the, the problem is that do people just get scared? Like, instead of just cautious, they just get scared and then they mm -hmm. don't say anything mm -hmm. at all. So, I think that is our main problem in Singapore. It's before we can even talk about, you know, what do journalists do to kind of um, provide alternatives or criticize, we have to ask, like, how many journalists are, feel like they are free enough and safe enough to do so? So self-censorship is a major problem mm. in Singapore. Um, and sometimes people think that the line is a lot closer to them than it might actually be. So like, there might be actually a lot more space to say more things, but people just don't want to take the risk. Mm -hmm. And I think the fear with POFMA is that because again, it's such a vague law, then people will be even less willing to kind oh, of you know, venture out there and say mm -hmm. something. I see, I see. Okay, so the self-censorship has become one of the 
uh, one of the way to avoid the, the low environment from the ground. Okay, so what about in Germany, Marcus? Can you tell about can you tell us about uh, so what uh, the activists or the journalists do to to spread the awareness about this disinformation and how to urge the government to uh, to become more firm to in, uh, to to implement the law about this to the right issues. I mean, like this is the disinformation. Yes, you should uh, take down the disinformation or so on. And how the journalists and activists uh, did in yeah. the Germany? Yeah, there was one reaction uh, when this f fake news topic came that a lot of media outlets and we have a we have a big public radio and TV stations which are state sponsored, but in, uh, they're independent. It's a, I think it's a good system, uh, and and a lot of uh, of, of journalists started and, and initiatives started with fact checking. But mm. what was interesting, and I think this is a good good thing. There's some new phenomena, and then the people come and 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 look what are the facts. Uh, but interesting was that these fact checkers came into the focus of the of this racist movement, who saying, "Oh, now the fact checker is the enemy." I don't know if you experience this also. Uh, the, the, sure. It's interesting, but I think it was good that everybody is saying, "No, no fake uh, fake news law, but let's do it out of of the journalism and try to 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 get some kind of what could be the the, the, the not the truth, but yeah, like." What happened? Okay, I see. Okay, because Nadine already put up the sign of the the, f the last five minutes. I will ask one last question for every uh, for each speaker here. Maybe. Uh, so, what can we do as a as an, I mean netizen or a citizen in the online and in the uh, can, uh, in the, our country to addressing this content restriction or this law that uh, oppress the freedom of expression in online or in the, in the offline and what is the best way we can take to make, I don't know, make this freedom of expression better in every way in, in every country. Okay, maybe Mas Aji can uh, yeah, well, well, we need to f uh, un to make sure that the, the netizens, the citizens understand that what we would like to have is actually the balance between the freedom of expression and also public safety. I mean that uh, false information is not always uh, bad. I mean that because we do always, uh, human nature is uh, spreading uh, wrong information. But we have to understand to distinguish between wrong information only and wrong information that can cause harm. Mm. This is a big, very big difference. And they should be treated very differently. Yeah. For example, uh, people spreading uh, misinformation should not be gone using the uh, penal code, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they should get more education. Or mostly if, uh, in some case, uh, I have a, a one, one story in a, in a village in, a, in a Yogyakarta when a teacher spreading a misinformation that actually creates a kind of trouble, uh, what the people in the village uh, said, they don't bring it into the police, but they uh, make it together in the uh, ballroom and then they say that this is wrong and then uh, we would like to give you like a social punishment mm -hmm just to clean something that you realize that you have to not to uh, repeat it again. So this is a kind of solutions that we need to make. So not only, uh, I think the law enforcement should be very, very last resort. So, so uh, that's why uh, we need to make sure that the, the spirit of restorative justice, uh, preferring the mediations rather mm -hmm. than punitive law is uh, very, very important. Thank you. Okay, so um, what do you think the society can do to... Yeah, I, I think uh, um, free speech should be regulated by laws. I think this is important. And not the law which, is, which uh, Facebook makes, but the, for in my case, the German law. And I think, okay, in, in, in former times, without the internet and social media, it was quite uh, another job. And 
we have to find a way how we can like have decisions of, of, of courts and, and, and the law uh, and not uh, uh, how, how we transfer it to a process where it's really getting fast mm -hmm. and the communication is much faster. But uh, I think, yeah, law should be the law and courts. Law. It's the thing I, I like to have uh, regulating free speech. Um, I think we we do have to empower people. So like we do have to empower communities and people to to build trust. So so there have been studies that suggest that this information gains less traction in societies where there is social trust. So people don't fall for conspiracy theories so quickly. I feel like in a society where, for example, people don't trust each other, people don't trust the government, you are much more likely to be like, oh, there is a conspiracy theory of the government hiding something from <laughs> us. And that's very dangerous. So definitely society, government, civil society, everybody should be interacting more mm -hmm. and building more trust and understanding that we can engage even if we don't agree. Uh, for Singapore, definitely. And I think this is probably relevant to other contexts as well learning to deal with conflict. So the fact that you see something online that you don't like, um, it might be true, it might be fake, but you don't like it, does not grant you the license to want to stamp it out. So we should not have a culture where we think we can run to the police or mm -hmm. to the authorities every time we see something online that we don't like. We should be able to engage in discussion and talk about it. If it is, um, as Aji says, if it is misinformation or disinformation that doesn't actually cause harm, then are there other ways that we can address things as a community rather than say, oh, that's fake news, I'm going to like call the police right now and then like they, they're going to do something about it. Um, which is a very knee-jerk response for Singaporeans at the moment. Every time we see something that we don't like, mm -hmm. like, um, you know, we had a, a pair of siblings do a rap video about racism and then people called the police on them. Um, so we need to get rid of this sort of mentality that, you mm -hmm. know, I will, I will appeal to authority to deal with all these problems. We need to be able to learn how to deal with the conflict ourselves. Oh, okay, thank you so much. Okay, must the name maybe? The last statement and the closing. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, to do multi-stakeholders, I know it's, it, this is not easy. It's uh, complicated. It's difficult because there's two different animals. No, it's several different animals: civil society, governments, uh, private sectors, academia. But it's like growing the love, right? So, yeah, means two persons when they they need to grow their love. Hmm. They believe the time will, you, I mean, give time a chance, right? And okay. embrace the difference. Mm -hmm. Embrace the difference, give time to chance, and engage more frequently, because that's the only way that we can know each other, okay. then let do the magic happen. <laughs> <with you. laughs> All right, thank you so much, Mas Doni, Kirsten, Marcos, and Mas Aji. Thank you for the very engaging discussion uh, this uh, evening. Okay, so thanks everybody uh, for attending this session.